So it seems like the Cuban people are currently engaged in a revolt against the communist government there. And I gotta say, if you ever want to see a bunch of progressives and libertarian socialists immediately turn into boot-licking tankies, all you have to do is bring up Cuba. People on the left talk about Cuban healthcare all the time, how it's free and universal and great. I've even heard trans activists talk about how they fund gender transitions. Of course, what actually happens is communist Cuba enslaves physicians, sending them abroad, stealing their wages, and forcing them to act as spies. Cuba is known for sending doctors out to other countries to perform humanitarian work, and I'm sure in between the spying they actually do perform that work. But let's not pretend that that's anything more than propaganda. In fact, a lot of Cuba's doctors just seem to be regular people who wanted to go into the profession and help others, and they're forced by their government to do this sort of stuff. Cuba has long been renowned for its medical diplomacy. But according to a new report, some of the doctors themselves say conditions can be nightmarish, controlled by minders, subject to a curfew, and posted to extremely dangerous places. Dr. Daly Coro wanted to be an intensive care specialist. She said that after graduating, she was told that if she went on a medical mission to Venezuela, she would gain experience in her chosen field. However, she found herself in a war zone, one in which she became accustomed to having a gun pointed at her. There were many criminal gangs. When they fought, they brought their injured to us, because the local Venezuelan hospital had a police presence and we didn't. These kids would bring in a patient with 12 or 15 bullets in his body, point their guns at you and say you had to save them. If he died, you would die. I had one with a bullet through the heart, another with five in the head. Some would be alive, but you knew that if they were not operated on within 20 minutes, they would die, and we didn't have the necessary conditions. We didn't even have basic medicine. Once, an ambulance was shot up by another gang, and a Venezuelan doctor and the driver were killed. There was always the possibility that the rival gang might try to finish off the patient during the transfer. I had a situation where a rival gang came in and shot the patient dead. Here's another one's point of view. A Cuban-American doctor says that the left has a terrible blind spot for Cuba's healthcare system. Dr. Gracie Christie, a Cuban-American doctor, had to explain why Cuba is a terrible, corrupt nation after Bernie Sanders praised Cuba's policies. To talk about healthcare in Cuba is to talk about one of the saddest things on Earth. There is no healthcare in Cuba for regular people. There are clinics for foreign visitors and tourists, and there is one special hospital for the communist elite. The hospitals and clinics for everyone else are covered in roaches and rats and have no equipment. They have no medicine. They have no gauze. When a Cuban person in Cuba needs to have an operation, they call their family members here in Miami to send them gauze, syringes, suture material, and that's what they use in Cuba for operations. The Cuban people have nothing for themselves. Various socialist countries have a long history of doing this. They have a walled garden where Westerners can come in and observe the utopia in progress while the regular people suffer. And the current revolt against the government seems to be based in healthcare, at least partially. Thousands of Cubans take to the streets to demand the end of the dictatorship. In an unprecedented display of anger and frustration, thousands of people took to the streets Sunday in cities and towns across Cuba, including Havana, to call for the end of the decades-old dictatorship and demand food and vaccines, as shortages of basic necessities have reached crisis proportions and COVID-19 cases have soared. And of course, because progressives are nothing if not hypocritical, suddenly all that open border stuff has vanished now that it's Cubans fleeing Cuba. Homeland Security Chief says the U.S. will not give refuge to those fleeing Cuba and Haiti by boat. They will not be allowed to enter the U.S. even if they demonstrate fear of being persecuted or tortured in their home countries. Allow me to be clear, if you take to the sea, you will not come to the United States. Now, the reason that progressives absolutely hate the idea of ICE is that they deport illegal immigrants. And usually their, their outward-facing justification for this is that some of these illegal immigrants might actually be able to get refugee status, they just haven't gotten around to it yet. And downstream from that is the idea that it's a violation of international law if a country doesn't take refugees. But what is this? People who are fleeing Cuba, clearly refugees, from, from a repressive communist dictatorship. And now suddenly refugee status is out the window? Maybe it's because Cubans overwhelmingly vote Republican, even more so now that the Democrats are slowly being subverted by socialists. And this is how we get back to the bread tubers and the champagne socialists. These are people who, despite their anti-tanky rhetoric, are happy to sing Cuba's praises. I despise Guasanos. I don't even know how to pronounce that word. I hope, I hope Guasanos is good enough. They're some of the worst scum on earth, functioning as the base for the fascist far right in the US, and desiring nothing more than to extend that to the country they left when their slaves were liberated and lands were redistributed. Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz types. Guasanos want to do to Cuba what fascist imperialists have done to Haiti and other countries in Central and South America. Utterly destroy it and salt the earth so it can never again give hope to anyone in the region. But they will fail as they have for over half a century now. The verdict's in. 
If you're a Cuban who opposes leftism in all of its forms, if you oppose the authoritarianism and the communism of the Cuban regime, then not only are you a fascist, but you're a race traitor as well. So the word Guasano translates to worm. And according to the left, at least back in 2015, it's used as an ethnic slur against Cubans. But now that it's a slur used exclusively by leftists at this point, it's not a slur at all, at least according to Hassan. Though an even more ridiculous take comes from somebody who's replying to him. It's not even a slur, it's referring to class traders specifically. Literally, you lose your Latino card if you're a class trader against the socialist revolution. But of course, it's always been this way. Do you remember back during the 2020 election when Cubans overwhelmingly voted for Donald Trump and then suddenly the left's racism was on display for all to see? The Cuban vote is not the Latino vote. Cubans have been sold a narrative that they have a guaranteed path to whiteness and many will sell out every other minority to get it. Trump's appeal is the appeal of white supremacy. What's actually being said here is that Cubans are integrating into American society successfully. And so if you're going to have a career as being anti-American, you have to cover Cuban people in a layer of white paint. Whenever the left talks about this topic, there is absolutely a conflation between the Cuban racial and ethnic identity and the politics of the Cuban government. To them, because Cuba is communist, you can't be a real Cuban if you're not. This one has to be the most ridiculous take, though. It's worth remembering right now that the U.S. intentionally developed a social support system for Cuban exiles, meant specifically to foster a U.S. loyal Cuban population that would lend vocal support and an appearance of legitimacy to U.S. interventionism. Ironically, a high degree of social investment on the government's part used to naturalize, house, and otherwise prepare Cubans for life in the U.S. galvanized one of the most aggressively reactionary populations in the country, and an obstacle to socialist gains here and in Cuba. Here is where you get that whole social democracy is the left edge of fascism point of view, which is absolutely ridiculous. But now we have some Cuban food mixed into it as well. I don't fucking know. Because this guy is literally complaining that Americans did what the left wants the American government to do, which is provide social support for these people, and those people are now thankful for it, and that's the problem. <laughs> Listen, if you want a wild ride down this rabbit hole, head over to Wikipedia and look up the term social fascism. It's the idea that social democrats, you know, you know, basically welfare state dems, people who aren't socialists, but they're certainly progressive and certainly on the left, people who want a liberal capitalist society, but they also want Scandinavia style social safety nets, that those people are fascist <laughs> because in alleviating the working class's woes, the working class will no longer want to revolt and impose a communist government. <laughs> Literally helping people is reactionary when you want a revolution. So we've talked about the doctors thing and we've talked about the racism thing. What else is floating around the libertarian socialists when it comes to Cuba? Do you think it has something to say when it comes to Cuba having to resort to oxen rather than tractors to produce their food due to the slow decay of their society? I wonder if they have anything to say about how an ex-Cuban judge revealed secrets of how Cuba suppresses dissent. The repression that I am seeing against part of my people is not what I want for my people. I have a lot of fear about the future. Every day Cubans face more fear. I don't want blood on the streets of Cuba. I don't want these imprisonments. He revealed that contrary to official public figures, the government hides secret information showing that they are holding thousands of inmates on dubious charges and has the highest incarceration rate in the world. The progs and the socialists also like to say that Cuba is anti-imperialist and that socialism in general is anti-imperialist. They, of course, conveniently forget, or it's more likely that they don't know because they're completely uneducated on everything they talk about, that Cuba invaded Angola from 1975 to 1991 to help prop up that genocidal socialist regime, and that socialists of the day called Cuban interventionism social imperialism. Maybe they'll blame it all on the American embargo, dude. Because the United States, since I think JFK, has not allowed any trade with Cuba. Well, actually, that's the thing. It's, it's an embargo, not a blockade. They sometimes call it a blockade, but again, they're wrong. If it were a blockade, that would mean that the U.S. is surrounding Cuba with ships and not allowing anybody to trade with them. But that's not what's happening. The U.S. has an embargo. That means that it's illegal for American companies to trade with Cuba. Not Canadian ones, though not European ones, not any other country. In fact, those doctors from the start of the video, they got paid through Venezuelan oil money that Cuba and Venezuela traded. And in fact, on the IMF's website, you can see that Cuba still imports some stuff from the United States. Because guess what? It's not even a full embargo. So this idea that Cuba is simply withering on the vine because America has built a wall of ships around it is, is just ridiculous. 
This here might be the source of at least some of Cuba's problems. This is from Cuba's National Office of Statistics, where it shows the Cuban regime investing almost 50 times more money in foreign investments in comparison to things like public health or education. Maybe this is why Cuba sucks so much, and it's got nothing to do with those evil liberals in the West. So in the face of all of this, all of these anti-authoritarian socialists, all of these true, real, left libertarians, you can watch them turn into tankies right before your very eyes. If any Cubans cry about fleeing Cuba because of communist oppression and fascist Fidel Castro, ask them why they didn't flee under Batista, the actual fascist dictator. Surely political suppression is bad in all forms, no? The Mao might mix right as good when we do it, huh? No, might makes right is good when it does the greatest amount of good for the greatest number of people. Literally advocating for a dictatorship if that dictator is of the same politics as you. Fucking insane, dude. Here's one of my tweets. When a socialist nation... Oh, this was... I know this is one of Lance's tweets, but he deleted it. Oh my god. I guess it was that bad of a take, eh? When a socialist nation needs trade with a capitalist one to even send a chance at existing, there might be some problems with their economic system. So what was that that deleted Lance tweet? The one that he must have got so much hate for for being that fucking stupid. By the way, Cuba has a vaccine. In fact, they have five. <laughs> what they lack are syringes due in part to Trump-era sanctions that Biden hasn't reversed. You know that you can quickly fact check this shit, right? You could have looked up, for example, that Bill Clinton signed in the year 2000 the Trade Sanctions Reform and Export Enhancement Act, which exempted both food and medical supplies from the embargo. And in fact, at this point, the US is Cuba's largest food supplier and its fifth largest trading partner. They're literally only banning luxury goods and I think tourism now. It's a very bourgeois topic for the serfs to take up, eh? Let's not expect any consistency from Lance, though. I'm currently on his timeline right now, and here he is retweeting fascists sticking up for fascists regarding Cuban protesters in the United States. Another one. Residents in Cuba have mobilized in defense of the revolution and against U.S. intervention. You know, it's not really defense of the revolution anymore because the revolution's over. It happened 60 years ago. The people are now having a revolution against your faction. I had to say this before, all the way back in the conservatism is the new counterculture video, but you are not eternally the revolution. At some point, you become the establishment. You become old hat. You become the thing that free people rebel against. I mean, nobody's surprised that Lance turned out to be a crypto tanky, right? You know, for all their screaming about how there is no lib right, libertarians are just secret fascists, or even liberals are fascists, centrists are fascists, everyone but them is a fascist. When all of these so-called libertarian leftists, lib socialists, whatever, when the chips are down, they're all fucking tread lickers. Black Lives Matter, despite being all about police brutality, and despite how many people the Cuban police have absolutely fucking butchered for no reason, has decided to come out in support of Cuba's communist regime. Cuba has historically demonstrated solidarity with oppressed peoples of African descent, from protecting black revolutionaries to supporting black liberation struggles in Angola. Oh yeah, where they were the imperialists. Nobody should be surprised that BLM goes thin blue line as soon as Cuba's involved. After all, they said as much back in 2016. The reason why this video is not about Cuban history specifically is because on that topic I only know so much. I do know that socialism has taken a prosperous society and turned it into a ruinous one, as it does everywhere it's tried. But this video is about how all of those hypocrites on the left, the progressives, the anarcho-communists, the libertarian socialists, all the people who claim to be anti-authoritarian, all of that stuff is just an aesthetic. It's surface level. Their real positions are what I've shown you here today. BLM is not anti-policing. They just want to be the ones in power. BreadTube is not actually anti-authoritarian. They simply want their camp to be the authority. These people will simp for the worst fucking regimes in human history as long as they're waving the correct flag. The most heinous violation of all, though, the worst hypocrisy, is how these people can all claim to be sex positive and still support the sex negative Cuban government, who went on to blame Mia Khalifa, the porn actress, for all of their woes. Y hay que ver aquí cómo en toda esta campaña acudieron a todos los youtubers y a todos los influencers que pudieron en redes sociales, incluyendo una eh, determinada artista con determinadas características que empezó apoyando el bloqueo y parece que después la presionaron y terminó eh, diciendo que yo soy un, un tirano, alguna de esas, eh, eh, alguno de esos epítetos. 